Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be grading the Kyrie Irving to Mavericks trade and hint, it's not good for the Mavericks and it's good for the Nets. So let's get right into it. Well, I'll start off with the Mavericks because this is this is who the trade is mainly centered around because they got Kyrie Irving and Kyrie Irving, he's a really, really good player and he'll help Luka Doncic a ton. However, 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 Kyrie is a volatile player being anti-semitic and being suspended in the past and he like he went against vaccination guidelines and also got suspended so yeah he's not really the most trustworthy player he's also very injury prone he's 30 years old a pretty short but like very active guard and his usage rate has been insane this season so he might not be that good for the time that he's in the mavericks and I say time that he's in the Mavericks because he could just leave the team this offseason. So for the Mavericks, this one is really controversial, but I'm giving them a C for this trade. Because I'm just going to say this was not a good trade. Just not a good trade. But there's actually a team that's not the Mavericks or the Nets who won from this trade. So stick around till the end of the video for that. But first, I'm going to grade the Brooklyn Nets. And I'm going to come straight out and say it, this is a B plus for them. Really, really solid. Because Kyrie Irving wanted to leave, and the trade market value was pretty low for him, seeing, like, how I explained earlier, how volatile of a player he was. But, instead, you know what they got for him? They got two very solid contributors, Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, and they got two seconds, which second round picks usually aren't good, but think who's been drafted in the second round. You've had Nikola Jokic, Draymond Green, literal superstars have gone in the second round. Then you also have a 2027 first. So, I mean, they got a ton in return for not a lot that they gave away. However, they also gave away Markeith Morris. And Markeith Morris is a pretty solid player. So I don't like that from them, but I guess they did have to give away someone. Now, the Brooklyn Nets, they were going for telecontention this year. Like, over the past 20 games, they've won 18 of them. And guess what? They're not going for telecontention anymore. Like, I don't know how any team can go with uh, for telecontention if... Their starting center is Nick Claxton, who he's been playing well this season, don't get me wrong, but he's just not, no, he's not a starting center for a championship caliber team. Then at shooting guard, they have Yuto Watanabe starting, and he's like a seven foot guy that's starting at shooting guard, so that's really weird. The Nets' whole lineup is just super duper strange, and I don't, do not think that they're championship contenders this year. But pivoting back to the Mavericks, I think that they might be championship contenders this year because even though they do not have any depth, I'll just come out and say it, they have the worst depth in the league arguably, maybe after like rebuilding teams like the Rockets or the Spurs, but they still have two superstars and like think about like how many ISO plays they're running, like give the ball to Kyrie, run an ISO, give the ball to Luka, run an ISO, like pretty unstoppable seeing as they're two of the best iso guards in all of the game but now as i promised earlier let's talk about the hidden team that won the most from this trade and that team is actually the houston rockets yeah that's right the houston rockets won the most from this trade because the rockets have every single first round pick between now and 2027 because of the james harden trade and if the nets aren't that good then the Rockets have really good draft picks. And you see where I'm going with this. If they get Victor Wembanyama or Scoot Henderson or someone good, which they will get someone good in this year's draft because they suck and they'll get top five odds, then they'll probably be ready to start like contending for a title in 2025 or so. And guess whose pick they have in 2025? They have Brooklyn's pick. Guess whose pick they have in 2026? They have Brooklyn's pick. Guess whose pick they have in 2027? They have Brooklyn's pick. And since the Nets don't look like they're going to be good anytime soon with a lack of star power except for KD on their lineup, which KD is an amazing player, by the way. He's just, I don't think that he's enough personally. Some might think that he's enough, but he's not. He's not a championship leader. Um, 
But yeah, the Rockets now have all the Nets' picks. The Nets aren't great, so the Rockets, they're going to be like the Warriors when the Warriors had all those picks. And, it, and then when they, the year after they won a title, they got James Wiseman, they got Jordan Hull. Like, it, it's been ridiculous. And the Rockets are about to do that. So the secret winner of this trade is the Houston Rockets. But if you want to see something different than the Rockets, because so let's be honest here, who really cares about the Rockets? You should watch my video about Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers and how they are cheating in the NBA. So go watch right now on the screen.